Hey, welcome everybody to another edition of On the Trail in Search of Living Legends. Uh, we have an awesome, amazing, mind-blowing show for you today. Uh, I'm here with my partner, my big brother, Mr. Nick Valente. Nick, how's it going, bro? Hey, Jay. Going great. Going great. How are you doing today? And happy Easter to everybody. I'm, yes, happy Easter, everyone. I, I, got, I know I got a full belly. I don't know you. Oh, man. I am full to the gills. <laughs> even eat dessert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I that's what I was saying earlier too. I can't, I couldn't get the razzleberry pie in me. I usually can. <laughs> razzleberry pie, oh man. Uh, me, whip, I mean, whip, I just whipped amazing. cream and ice cream or no? Whipped cream on top. Oh Something yeah. Done. Oh. God, I, I might try again later though. <laughs> so tonight we've got a uh, a good friend of mine that I've known for some years now. Uh, very credible gentleman. Um, the stories he's going to tell you tonight are just going to blow your mind, but I will let him get to that. Uh, Mr. Randy DeBruin. Randy, how are you, my man? I'm doing well, Jeremiah. It's good to see you, and good evening, Nick. Good Happy evening, Easter. Randy. Good seeing you. Glad to have you with us. Sure. Yes, it's an honor to have you back on the show, man. True, 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 true honor. So, Randy, uh, that's what we can start out by just uh, give us, uh, give the guests a little, uh, we get a whole view, uh, or we get a whole uh, whole set of new viewers now, you know, being this, this being season five, so season five, it's going to be episode 17, um, you know, so uh, we get a whole group of new viewers. So can you uh, just get into, get into your bio a little bit, your background? Sure. Um, I'm a Canadian citizen live in Canada and um, I grew up um, in, in central Alberta and I spent most of my time in the woods as a child and I, I learned from my mother uh, mush, how to collect mushrooms mm -hmm. in and um, a little bit of the ways of the wild there in the, in, and I became more interested in that. And um, when I became a little bit older, I joined the, the military and I was with the Canadian Armed Forces as an artillery man for uh, about four, four years or four and a half years. Okay. And wound up, I suffered some injuries. I stepped on an IED and, mm. and helicopter crash and some other stuff. But um, it was, uh, survived all that. And, and, uh, and now, and then I, um, spent quite a bit of time recovering from that it was a few few years and then i got into yeah. i was working in a hospital and um they suggested why don't you try being a medic because uh, you seem to do good when people walk in here and and they're all stressed out and, and sure. so i so i started doing that and i excelled in it because um be able to operate on your own and make decisions um, you know, on the spot that were, and I was okay with that. I was able to do that sort of thing. Right. And I was comfortable with it. It didn't freak me out. And so I was able to go out into remote areas and also in the cities and take care of people. And right. then, well, I, uh, my love for the forest kept drawing me back in and I, I, uh, I began to spend large amounts of time in the forest. And um, I told my family I was out hunting, but a lot of times I, I didn't even have a bullet <laughs> chambered. I was, uh, I had, <laughs> had it laid down and I had my fingers into the moss and I was leaning against a tree and meditating. And, mm. and I found, I found all about all these different energies that were in the forest and, and um, how helpful they are and how they could help um, me heal from mm. the, you know, stuff that you, has happens as you work with in the military or in, um, as a first responder, um, mm. wind up with PTSD and I did. And, uh, and I also wound up getting, uh, injured quite badly again when I was an EMS. So, um, mm. was my refuge that after that. Um, because when you're seriously hurt, a lot of things change in a person's life. And I know quite a few veterans could probably relate when they're badly injured and it takes years to heal. Um, sometimes um, families are not able to cope with such intensities of pain and, and uh, 
dis well sometimes dismemberment even like mm. on sure yeah yeah a lot of guys lose their families and and uh, unfortunately that happened to me too so mm. um, from there i just continued on in the forest and um um basically full time because i was i didn't have to worry about anyone else so right. i've learned greatly since um this event happened that when i saw this um sasquatch or mountain person i don't know what they call them anymore but um i i saw that i saw this creature and uh, since then i've learned a lot more uh, about who they are and um mm -hmm. Um, and um, also that um, that you there is ways to communicate as well with mm -hmm. them. And, um, I found that very interesting because, I, well, I was receiving communications and I I thought it was my imagination, so mm. I found out that it wasn't. But all right. through, too, I think you kind of knew, like when I talked to you, I didn't yeah. even really. Um, I I don't even think I voiced that I was was a medicine because I no, really no you didn't not done the first time no I don't remember saying that but I do remember just um at, uh, of late how um it's become quite obvious to so many people mm. that I learned many secrets of the, of our forests around here and I was able to help a lot of people. And uh, That's so good. just for myself, but it was uh, my hope was to find a cure for PTSD, really. And mm. uh, I did find cures for many other diseases so far. And uh, so it's um, it's been a good thing for me to to carry on in in that realm as well, because people sure. are, well, are, are seeking me out now to, and asking for my help. So, That's awesome. They've heard that, well, I got healed over here by that guy. He did something with some herb or some, something out of the forest, and I'm better now. So people are saying those things. So I'm winding up. That's um, awesome, Marie. That's awesome. Yeah. It's a big heart. It it's a man, shows a man with a big heart right there, you know? It really does. It's really good that you found that, really. Yes. Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Randy, now, um, did you have an interest in cryptos as a child, or did it just uh, start when this first uh, event, which we'll get into in a minute, took place? My view was that they were mythical, made-up creatures to okay. keep people from straying too far away from camp. Okay. Be honest with you, because no yeah. way actually real someone would have noticed by now i thought so uh... <laughs> <laughs> so how now how long ago uh did it, uh, the first event now that uh that which is just amazing uh, i can't wait for you to get into it how long ago you start from the beginning tell us how long ago that took place and what were the circumstances of you being out there all right. So it, 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 if I remember correctly, it was in November mm -hmm. 19. Okay. Getting the numbers right on that. But it was in November for sure because it was hunting season. So, and uh, it, it was it was close to around the November 11th. But probably okay. I did 12th, but right in that neighborhood. And, um, for me that day, I had chosen to go farther away from my, in, in my hunting area than I normally, mm -hmm. and I, I traveled farther north, and then I went east off the highway when I found a, a skitter had skidded out an area, and it looked like it went for miles, and I thought, I've never seen this here before, <laughs> so I, my hubs, and then I went and had a, a long drive, actually, into these woods, and, um, and uh, I wound up um, uh, not just going east, but it, uh, the road turned and went uh, south. And I came up onto a, a meadow, um, mm. knee high, 
maybe a little bit higher in grass. I could see pretty good through it, about 30 feet on the ground still. But okay. it was a sea of, of grasses and different herbs growing in flowers. And, right. um, and then a bunch of pine trees and, and uh, birch trees and poplars. So I stopped the truck, thought that was a good spot to, to set up. And um, so I got my pick. I had a few rifles with me at the time, so I, I picked one out. I think it was, uh, I think I pulled out my 308 for that, and because I had uh, two shotguns and a six and a seven mm, and a, <laughs> you just never know what you're going to run across or where it is. Mm, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I like different tools for different distances and things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Because I, I had bear tags and I had a moose tag and I was kind of mm -hmm. hoping I also had deer, but I wanted, I was kind of looking for a moose. So mm -hmm. I got out of the truck, shut it off and all that and just shut the doors. And then I went to the front of the truck and I just sat down and checked over my equipment and just started breathing real calm and quiet. And, and uh, of course there isn't a sound or, or a creak from anybody in the woods at all that's everything's real quiet and I'm um, I just sit there and after about 20 minutes I started seeing squirrels run around and then a few birds started chirping here and there and then people's uh, or uh, people, my people's they started to relax in the forest right and all the different mm -hmm. animals to go about their business and, and he's not a threat to us so we're we're good yes so, I I was by then I was pretty tuned in to what was going on around me. I looked all 360s around me and then I look into the skies and see what's going on for weather and what kind of birds are in the air, that kind of thing, in case there's something around that I haven't noticed yet, like a carcass or some sort, but uh, you never yeah. know. So yeah. I just felt we're good to go forward. So I started going forward and I walked through this um it was still the skidsters trail but obviously okay. he didn't get out so badly going through this meadow but i'm walking i'm not in it but i'm uh, beside it i'm walking along and um i'm noticing all the trees are about 100 meters or about 110 yards 120 yards away from me on my east side and on my on my no, yeah, that was on my left side, yeah. And then on the right side, there were scattered three here and there. And it was about the same area. So I was pretty much in the middle of this meadow. And when I got up there, um, the whole place went super quiet. Mm. Mm. That's, and I felt this, and uh, it was just like, these things happened in an instant, Tim, but I noticed everything went quiet. I stopped moving. I took a breath and the next thing I saw was this immensely large creature uh, kind of like get up off the ground or come out of the ground, but he just mm -hmm. got up off the ground. But when he got up, as he got up and stood up, he was making this absolutely amazing yell it was i never heard anything like that before and it was like my body was rippling like you had thrown a stone into a pond my sure. chest especially my belly but i sensed immediately that that sound wasn't directed directly at me mm -hmm. and it, it was direct something else which just as i felt that up comes this moose that's between this creature and i and I should tell you that the, the creature was only, I'm, I swear to God, 30 steps, 30 steps. Oh, away my God. Far. And in between both of us uh, comes this moose. And he was a he was a full grown male at 50 inch plus horns. Wow. I was like. Where did they come through? I could see through the grass. I and, and I anyways, I couldn't figure out how these animals suddenly jumped up on me. And I'm, I've been in the bush all my life and I've yeah. never looked like that 
only well my daughter has once with a grizzly bear but we've never been spooked by by uh animals right. that could, like seemingly come out of the ground anyways <laughs> this yell from this mo or from this creature is sounds like a freight train and a i don't know the tyrannosaurus thing on jurassic park or that kind of mm -hmm. like horn mm -hmm. kind of screech all at the once but it was an amazing loud thing and i i sensed also that it was a weapon and that it was being directed. and when this moose jumps up in front of me its eyes are rolled back and it's screaming it's not bellowing it's screaming oh. I'm not about this but it was screaming and i'd never heard a moose scream before ever oh. and uh i've never heard of one scream since or ever heard of anybody saying they heard a moose afraid of something and screaming and running away yeah. but this screaming and it ran right past my left shoulder and i'm facing south and it's on the east side and it was like i can't believe that like it had its head back and and like it was close enough for me to be worried about my eyes on the horns you know like yeah it was he was that close but it was screaming its ears were flat up against its head and and its eyes were rolled back and i was just absolutely amazed at what i was seeing and i don't know if i i think i was just holding my breath and the moose went running past me i didn't even flinch with my weapon i didn't raise it or i had it just walking and i had a cross in front of me and I, I i didn't move it and and then this huge uh, man-like creature that was just too big for me to really comprehend at that moment mm. but he be not only bellered but kind of yeah, just lunged forward after this moose that had just gone past me and when it lunged it, it was in up in the air and I was about honest to god his hips were at my eyesight so wow. when he, like I was seeing kneecaps and feet and he kind of went by. And then when he was going by, I could almost scent them, his smell. It mm -hmm. was uh, fresh and it, I've never smelled that smell from a, like a bear, moose. They all, deer, they all have their peculiar scents and, mm -hmm. and, and muskrats and beavers, all of those things. This thing was a completely different smell very delightful smell actually really really wow, wow. it was quite something it, it, all those things kind of went click click click, click in my head yeah like, but it, i saw its deep big eyes and they were like this far apart from my head and i was like like afterwards i'm thinking that head must have been absolutely amazingly huge because its eyeballs were like what it, my whole head would have fit in between which eyeball is that like wow it was, it was a big head it was huge mm. it was like looking at a brahma bull standing up wow so randy if i'm That's, hearing you right Hulk hogan's chest and yeah and figure i guess you could say i don't know what to say about that right but, right randy huge. just a question um I've, so I'm this sure. bull moose when it saw or heard the sasquatch it was actually trying to get away from it. Yeah, it was like it was laying down, hoping that um, you know, obviously uh, the the thing would creature would pick up on me instead of it. But yeah. I, but I was just too damn close. And then when the creature moved towards me, we were he was right in the middle. We were right in the middle. Wow. It had to move, and it when it got up and moved, it was like it had been running already. Like mm. I don't. It was just the weirdest looking thing i just couldn't put it together mm -hmm. and it took like a freaking rocket and it was just bellering and this thing wasn't running behind it it was bounding going mm -hmm. going and when it also when it was going by it i should tell you this part because when it went past me if i'd stuck my rifle out like held the end of it and pulled it it would have hit the end of my rifle i know that oh. it, we were by and so it was like, okay, I felt the wind. I heard all this. I felt all this. I, and, and there's this moose. And I was just captivated when the animal went by. I kept watching it. And he landed on, beside it on the 
east side of the animal heading northeast and it raked it Ooh. three times <laughs> and I saw blood fly. Oh. All right. And that's quite a distance already. Yeah. A moose at a dead run and this thing bounding in the air. And it, so it couldn't have been more than 30 feet away, maybe 40, but I was seeing blood and I mm. fur hair all over the place from just three of those swipes. And then I realized I saw the at the end of his fingers. It was just like a freaking nail, just like an ordinary yeah. nail. I have it. It was, it was thick, and it was kind of sharp. Okay. But he had them on all of his fingers, but not his thumb. It did, okay. I didn't see his thumb, but I could see they did their work. I tell you, and uh, wow. then that moose just kept doing it screech off into the woods. It hit those poplars and was knocking down six-inch poplars like they were toothpicks. He had his head back and he was just going. That creature came in and when he bounded, he just bashed like that tree and fell. And it, it was screaming, trees are falling. The moose is screaming and they go about a hundred maybe yards into the bush and the moose stops abruptly and does a hard right. And now it's going south because moose don't usually run in a straight line. And it right. went, hard so far i was like what the hell is going on here but that thing was right on it mm. and uh, it went by it was kicking and the thing i saw some more raking and i could see the hair flying and then wow. um, down in there with my mouth open and it runs about probably a hundred yards maybe a little bit more and then the moose just stops on a dime and the fight is on it's kicking um, this big creature just swiping at it and oh god and the, the noise was just deafening absolutely deafening and uh, it seemed to me that, that uh, either through kicking or horn got away from it and mm. ran straight west okay and for this um and by this time, because they're in the, about a hundred yards down, they're at the very end of whatever meadow I was in. They're, mm. they're, they're off on the east side of that. And, and it runs off across this um, the skidster road that carries on south probably 300 meters and then low curve, really heavy, dense bush. Mm. Uh, it, it's they started fighting again on the on the on the on the west side of this skitter road mm. and trees were coming down and it was just an ungodly sound I, I the sounds from that huge big sasquatch he was making the weird sounds i wish i could articulate them and tell you what they sound like copy them but i don't know how to yeah frightening were sounds like they were words, but they just made your blood run cold. And that mm -hmm. was happening every other second because they kept making all these different noises and trees are falling down and it would run across. Again, there would be a big fight. And uh, three times they ran forth in front of me. The third time, the moose, I think it kicked him in the head and knocked him down, to be honest with you. <laughs> There was a space of only a second or so, and this moose took its chance and it took a light look at me and just went straight for me at a dead run. It comes out of the bush, comes across the meadow, and it's not stopping. It's just full on screaming and it's coming straight for me. Then I see Sasquatch get up, it, and now it's displaying anger. In my book, that mm -hmm. would be like you, you kind of thing and right just started rip the ground up and he was coming after us and i thought well it's going to take a while for him to build up speed right to get to us maybe i have to get the hell out of the way and no i didn't have yeah. it like uh he went from zero to literally uh, i don't know how in one bound it just Oof. And when it was coming across the field and it was doing like 40 foot jump 
and screaming. Wow. And it, it was extremely intimidating. Absolute. I know I couldn't move. And I wasn't really feeling. It just scares the shit out of me to tell you that now because I wasn't really having fear at that moment. I was yeah. obsessing. But um, it was coming at me. The moose, like that moose is going to hunker and try. And it started slowing down. Do that. And I was like, oh, like, you can't do that. And the, and he, the moose picked up on, no, I'm not doing that. And he veered off away from uh west and we were quite close at that time that when uh when that transpired when we started angling we were only 30 paces 45 paces away he was at a dead run i can't be exact and he went west and uh, this creature by that time was right on the skidster road and he cleared the road in one jump in this area. It was just like, anyways, he took, he hit the ground once. He, when, the, when he hit the ground, it was like an earthquake. I felt the reverberation of it mm -hmm. and in the air. And when he screamed, he went past me in the air landed pretty much on top of this thing or right beside it on the left side of it reached around grabbed it by the by the neck the throat grabbed its horns and yanked and when it yanked about this far back probably about a foot and a half back the the, the spine it's it, it, it had snapped at the, at right by the shoulder and i saw it, the the bone the spine going down on top of the like on top of the other spine the yeah flat. yeah I, I saw it go way back and like the the feet came right up underneath that moose and was dead instantly and then sure. it, it grabbed its head like this and then it went like this and he was looking at me and he was went eyeball to eyeball with the moose and he's looking right at it and go down they go down and when they get on the ground, they're like, what, 30, 30, 40 feet? And then they've skidded probably a little bit to the ground. So they're not far. They just absolutely did. There's no sound. I couldn't even hear heavy. A big fight like that. I didn't hear. Yeah. I should be hearing that off of that massive creature. Sure. And then that kind of like, uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Now, now we got the contact all the way, and I and I realized I am so disappointed. Got to move slow, and then I was I, that was probably the most stealth move I've ever made in my life. Some minutes just to go a very short distance. A very I can't. I don't think it was only five. But Guys, I we're was... having a sound problem. Yeah, a little bit. We're having a sound problem, Randy. Is that what's happening now? Is that better? That's, that seems to be a little bit better, yeah. Yeah. In order, well, I put it in that stand, and I think it muted the mic. <laughs> it might, it might, yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds a little better, yeah. It does. That's better yeah. right there, right there, yeah. Yeah. If I went sideways and put it like that, how does that work? Is that oh, still... that's really that's, good. That's better. Oh, that's better. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. perfect. Oh, Great nice. Idea. Do we have um, to back up then? No, yeah, it's up to you. We can see it perfect. Um, now when this moose, or excuse me, when the Sasquatch got the moose down on the ground, did it go right to work at it, opening it up? Nothing like that. I didn't see a thing like that, Jeremy. Oh, okay. okay. Jeremiah, he took it by the head, looked it in the eye. When it went down, uh -huh. they laid down on the grass. He laid down on the grass with it, and <laughs> they were gone. I couldn't see them, and I was too oh, afraid. Wow. I couldn't take the step forward no. because I'd been around grizzly bears, and as soon as they kill something, they defend their kill. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You don't want to go near it. 
I, I thought I would get slaughtered if I were, and if I didn't want to die like that. Oh wow! No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it's too late. Anyways, I was I was in <laughs> that mode, and I thought I'll use all my skills to be as quiet as I can. That and is something, though, Randy, because a bull moose is aggressive. And yes. my God, not not to stand its ground and, and try to gorge whatever it is coming at him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's it. And it's in the rut. Yeah. So why, yeah. Would the, why would a rut 50 inch pal, big boy, we're talking 1,500 pounds, maybe even higher. He was well yeah, muscled. He was no, he, it's happening yeah, he, again. He was, he was a trophy, was what I was looking for. And he yeah. took it from me. But I got a distinct feeling that I'd been taken to school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. I got that very much so. But he never actually gave direct, he never turned and looked directly at me. It was always, I was in his peripheral, but as my peripheral and his peripheral were really close. <laughs> but he wasn't focused on me. And I saw, he showed me the weapons that he was using. And his voice is, if, if he focuses his head, he has to move his shoulders. Because this part, his, I noticed his head was kind of like, looked like somebody had jammed it into his, into his chest cavity. He didn't have a neck. Yeah, yeah. So no it was, neck. It was, yeah. like, it was neck. right in. And the shoulders come out about here, you know, almost. They try. Not, they try feet they, feet they look like. We got to adjust the volume yeah. again. Okay. It sounds like uh, you're it's underwater. Happening. Yeah, I can hear that too. I don't hey, know what that Jay, is. that's not you, is it? No, oh, right. so. How's that? It's quiet. That that underwater thing is gone now, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, and okay. then it came back. Okay. Came back again. If it came back, I'm gonna hold it this way away from that machine. Okay, maybe that's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, because this is too good an interview to, to lose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, 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 that yeah that's... <laughs> okay. That is uh, amazing, though, Randy. I'm going to tell you. I mean, it, to see something like that, definitely okay. once in a lifetime. I've seen oh, yeah. footage. I've seen film footage on a History Channel program of a, uh, a big brown bear fighting a moose. And yeah. uh, I mean, they were going at it, and uh, the brown bear won, by the way. But wow, uh, we're talking about a nine-foot Sasquatch here, and it's I think it was bigger. Bigger, to be honest. Man. Wow. Yes, sir. And this is why I do, because at first I thought maybe it's only ten feet, right? But yeah. it's hips. It's hips. It's hips. I was looking at its groin, and it, it's oh hips. my god. How tall are you, Randy? When when it stood, well, I'm a I'm a five foot eleven at that time. All right, so and you're five foot eleven, looking at it, and at its most, hips. I mean, 11, 11 feet. This eyeballs. thing must have been more like 10, 11 feet. Yeah, probably fourteen, because I could see oh. his, I could see across the moose's hump when it got up. That's six okay. foot six inches on the highest moose there is. That's as big as they can get down the shoulder. Yeah. Wow. And I yeah. thought he was, and that's exactly how come I can tell you I saw his crotch because I saw the top of that moose and I could see his crotch and it was like, this guy's, and I'm looking up like this and, and that's when Jeremiah mentioned that like, if his legs were short after the kneecaps down, <laughs> that is a large creature at the hips. Oh my God. He's got all that gut that you said he's four or five feet wide at least. Jesus. And he had... Yeah. He had arms. He had arms that were three feet around. I, I guess that would be the uh, in, di in, in, in diameter. Really? He, I never. His hands were. Pro I, I couldn't. How could I say that? One, two, three. I don't even know if they would be ten times bigger than my hand, but it, that sure looked it. But like his fingers were round sausages like this, and they were long. And then they had that. It was like it was too fast for me to really calculate exact millimeter jay yeah, that's that's yeah. that's but like the I one you, it was his hand was clearly bigger than my head wow. by a long way wow. unbelievable and, uh, he, could, he could go like that and that wouldn't be a problem for his hand 
because my head my head would wow. fit easy in his hand so that that's why i was so amazed and i just told myself i can't i can't run i can't be acting like a prey item in any uh, way at all it's just hold my grounds and hope to god i don't have to pull the trigger because i had no idea like <laughs> where am I going to aim at? What's the vital sign? Where right. where is one? Yeah, sure. And how is it going to even go through that kind of bone mass? Or the meat? muscle? Mass. Yeah, or yeah. the muscle? So I don't know if you could get through it. I've shot at trees and stuff like that. Yeah. I know a 308 don't go too far, and uh, but on flesh sometimes uh. it goes through. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> Randy, Very what do you? That, that would, he looked like a tough boy. Randy, so, if you had a guess. Soft. What do you, if you had a guess, what do you think he weighed in at? 2,000, 2,500? He weighed more than the moose by about okay. a thousand pounds, I would say. A moose was about 1,500 pounds. pounds. I would, I wouldn't, and, yeah, I would say that yeah. with, because it, it, he was, it was like a, a Brahma bull, like a truck standing up on it. It was, <laughs> and it was moving like lightning. It wasn't staggering or sloppy. No, because of all the power that something like that has. Exactly. Jay, Jay, this is like, this is like a 15 footer that, I mean, the muscle, the weight, the mass. Yep. I mean, yep. something like this. Face. I'm, I'm glad we, we don't come across these things like every oh. day. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just, you know, that's. <laughs> I got to rethink now when I go in the field with the team. I mean, what do we do? <laughs> you know? Yeah, what do you do? Do we take yeah. law rockets with us? I mean, that's that's totally <laughs> not legal. Totally not I, legal. I wouldn't. I I don't expect to. I I would carry a knife like I do, <laughs> and that would be about it. I'm like if I was going to 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 go there. To research, I wouldn't carry a firearm for that reason. I would only carry a firearm for like a, a, a rogue bear, which are one in a hundred and black bear, right? And then the, the right. grizzlies are out now, so you have to be careful yeah. about them in the mountains. But on the lowlands, yeah, they're you, not you so much. Grizzlies in Alberta, right about that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so God. I have to I have to watch for that, and then we have those cougars and stuff. So we yeah. just have to. Well, that's why I, you would have I, rifle I really out prepare there. Prepare more for them than I do yeah. the Sasquatch. Because yeah. if I prepared aggression uh, for for that, no. um, they would know before I came. And uh, I can exactly. be honest with you that on that one. No, that I, they I, I to know how to contact in my mind. There was yeah. stuff coming yeah. across yeah. that just seemed. That's how I knew I was being taken to school within those few seconds. Yeah, exactly. It was. Thank you. I don't know what that damn sound is. Not? Is that better with the sound if I move? No, nah, it's it's messing up again. It sounds like that. Yeah. Water. Stay, stay how, yeah. how about you go oh. this way with it? <laughs> yeah. If I stand on my head. Apparently. No, I mean if you could turn <laughs> it again. <laughs> oh, you mean like this? Pardon. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sounds so you like some. Sounds like I something's mean, plugged in, but it keeps getting unplugged and back and forth. Yeah. Like it's something. Did, did your phone like you on the phone? Uh, yeah, it could be a cheap phone. The only, I only paid $1,400 for it. So that's oh, my God. <laughs> Jay, I had to give in. I, I got my uh, monster coffee. Oh, yeah, I knew you were. <laughs> I needed to get it. I knew you would. I knew you would. <laughs> but getting back to what Randy went through, I mean, we're talking about a bull moose that's chickening out of a fight, and those things are aggressive as all. That's yes. It. I've never seen one that's not aggressive, and it's running for its life. Yes. Un unbelievable. Great. And a fight between the two of them, and then this thing is just taking it down like, like nothing when like, it finally decides yep. to bear down on it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. way, the way you describe it's breaking its back, that that just that, yeah. that's amazing to me how you could see the ripples the ripple really? all the way down the spine. So it went the opposite way. It, I mean, it pushed its head this way and snapped it then, right? No, I think I may have got that wrong here. Let's see. Uh, actually, he grabbed it with and right and grabbed it. Uh huh. I had to have. 
like this, like open the door. Snap like, its neck, yeah, right down. Yeah. Like, like, uh, and grab by the head. Like, went. And it was wow. Wow. And that, and that, I guess that's what's real. Uh, that's what freaked me out is at that point was like they they should be there that animal will should be kicking and showing the last signs of um, of its nerves and how can that creature that that's so big disappear yeah. in knee high grass that's only 30 feet away yeah. Yeah. 45 at the very most with them laid out yeah. unless they're in some kind of a dip and i thought i'm walking along and i can see the ground so there would have to be a dip right in that very, very spot because there wasn't anywhere else. Right. I could see the ground, right? And so it just confused me. Yeah. That part I just in a yeah, yeah. And like in that time of my life, I didn't smoke. I smoked cigarettes, I think that, that was it. I didn't drink, didn't use <laughs> smoke anything other than that. I didn't use weed or anything like that. Or, nothing of those things and i do now and i don't smoke cigarettes but for, for medicine now but, yeah but that's years later hey but at the time i was sober as a, as a judge and uh, it, um, it, it took me quite some time to get out of there and then once mm -hmm. i got in the truck i i just didn't even know if i could shut that door and yeah. um, because I had this real sense, I guess I should mention this, that there was someone else watching me and not just one. And I couldn't yeah. prove it. I couldn't see yeah. him, but I really felt things. And um, I had a sense that what would cause that moose to suddenly stop while it's running for its sure. life and do a hard yeah. turn. And sure. there's always some kind of a scuffle, but it's like, why didn't they just kill it? Like after yeah. I saw how it killed them so easy, I was like, was he corralling it? <laughs> and then when it was running, he's kind of he's kind of got me in his view. So I'm wondering, that's why I start. And all of a sudden, this real sense of I'm taking you to school, and boy, watch, yeah, watch, watch, watch who's the boss around here. And yeah. uh, you yeah. know, and because uh, and then I realized, yeah. I realized that he possibly knew me because he had, he was like, when I, when I, when he went by me the first time, I, it, it was like looking at myself. He had no, it was all, he, he kind of had a sparse, like a little tiny few hairs, like a native would have. Yeah. But, but right, there's okay. no hair like me, but right. their face up here, there were, it was clear. There was no hair on it. And he looked just okay. like an old native fella. He did, but he said wow. he looked like me. He looked like a human. There was no doubt in my mind, okay. except he was a huge human. But he looked okay. completely humanoid. He looked like he could be like a family member of mine. That's how wow. much of a family or, or look at that I got from him. And that was really wow. quite remarkable. I did not, I was uh, quite, quite taken back with that. How, how yeah. amazing he, he looked like a human being sure. and that that is sent because i thought well maybe if he crawled through the meadow he would have to go through all those flowers you know he would smell like from the forest but and he right. did and and he was his hair on his body was thick and black and it was black. scruffy it's all get out and it had hair or flowers in it from the forest and it had moss and leaves and sticks and all sorts of stuff. It would look like you've been crawling through the ground for quite a while. So that's why I made that assumption. But I couldn't carry that assumption for when he stood up. When he stood up, it was like, uh, how, how did you do that? Like, I was looking right there yeah. when he stood up. And it, there was nothing there. And then there was this, this guy coming out. And uh, that's that's what really got me and it uh, was when i'm walking out and i'm getting the sense there's others around they just killed that moose such ease yet they're not touching me so they right. want me to go and say something or they bring a message back or they want i i just got that but that was when i went home i mentioned 
something to my wife about I saw a creature I didn't know what it was and then I didn't speak of it again for eight years and then it was, um, I just put it out of my mind I thought that ah. you know like why would it ask me like who am I but um, I didn't know who I was so that right. doesn't count sure. on my end he knew exactly who I was and he took me out for a reason and that would get to, get to other encounters earlier on that I didn't recognize at all. I thought it was okay. natives parking around having a game with me. So I just, you know, stayed relaxed about it <laughs> and uh, didn't attribute the tracking as to actually be tracking me, but it right. was. Wow, that's but, incredible. Yeah. It, it, mind-blowing mind-blowing experience uh, that's something that 99.99999 percent of people will never see you know <laughs> they'll never see that I, never see it, that. that was just oh man. it was so beyond it was like you could see why i would say it was like how could i tell someone i saw something that was like 14 15 feet tall and like five feet wide bristling muscles look he yeah. had muscle frame <laughs> very very it, it was heavier than the hulk hogan but his arms totally reminded me of it because they were just defined muscles they were, yeah. the guy was in amazing shape and that's why i use the hulk hogan thing i hope he never yeah gets insulted but i think it was amazing how you know he that man had definition and this animal is what i can relate it to Right. Uh, on, right. Just on that, on his left arm that I saw up close. Damn. So, Randy, how many, how long after you had that experience did you have your next experience with uh, a creature out there? Well, consciously, it took me quite some time, I think. But I, oops, something happened. Oh, there you go. You you oh. get off your camera. Back keep and... going in and out, in and out. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It could be my phone not holding up to the signal. I don't know. Oh, that's yeah, a freaking... you're, right up, you're right up in there in Alberta. Yeah. Well, we got high tech. You know, we got all the stuff that they got in Arizona, Texas. Because <laughs> those guys <laughs> put it all in here. Right. What the hell is going on? How come our systems aren't working? But You're it could right. be my phone. It could be my phone and I story that my equipment's yeah. not working for you. It's annoying. No, no, it's just been great so far. Um Okay. Like, like, yeah, like Nick was asking, um, you had I know you had a second encounter when you had uh one of your kids with you or something and it was uh looked a little different. Oh the smell. When they smelled that? Yeah, that was uh, you know, the creature itself uh, was a little bit different. Oh, than, uh, yes. Okay, that yeah. was. Okay. About approximately six years later. Ooh. Okay. All right. I think it would be, yeah, that'd be really close to that. And you hadn't, and you Maybe hadn't stopped going that. out into the forest, though, right? You oh, kept no. going out, but oh, you just yeah. didn't have another encounter until six years later. That's right. I, I didn't, and I, I, uh, I just told myself if I don't go looking for it, it ain't gonna probably happen. Right. But if I go looking for it, I will. And right. at those times, it was just calm and quiet. But I did, I did become aware that I was being watched. Oh, God. I and I, I, I didn't really, wasn't sure what was, but I was, my senses were becoming more developed. They helped me develop my senses because sure. I could tell if they were miles away or close. So right. was, um, yeah, that was in one way, I don't know. I was wondering if they were trying to gain a friendship with me. And, uh -huh. uh, and uh, some people were quite afraid of that, that I would go out and not come back. But mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. well, if they were going to yeah. do that, they would have done that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that um, I might have a chance of doing that. So <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. But I, it didn't frighten me out of the woods. And like, I know that some people have seen these creatures 
and it has and um some people even have post-traumatic stress they say from yeah. seeing one not hearing one but actually seeing one seeing one and, right. I, and, I, and I could understand that i could because it's mm-hmm. in, intimidating and even yeah. with someone that's experienced in in different things and a lot of conflict and seeing a lot of things you hmm, i don't know that yeah. creature was unique very unique <laughs> very yeah. Um, yeah something i can forget now, was the second one as big as the first one? Can you describe the counter? Go okay, the second one later. was on. Yeah, it was. It was. I took my boys out for Easter. It was on Easter okay. weekend. And, and okay. Uh, actually, yeah. And then uh, we went out, and uh, we were going to check out the forest. So I said, "Well, we'll we'll do a, a sweep this way." And because uh, we haven't been in that area of the forest very much, we hunt in that area all the time for deer. But this time we're going to take a, we're going to go south a little bit and then go and look at everything we can and see what we can see for scat and for any sign. Yeah. And we started seeing lots of sign of deer and all sorts of other little creatures, you know, rabbits and squirrels and that. So sure. it's like, hey, this is a good spot. So we carried on and then, uh, we came to an area and the ground has been ripped up like uh, someone had taken a plow to it. I mean, tore up. It was all soft ground. And and uh, the only place I've ever seen ground ripped up like that and smoothed out was at, at horse races. You know, the yeah. ground has always worked. Well, this was worked very similar to that. That would oh, be wow. how I could found. And that it's in the forest, deep in the forest. And there's no, it's heavy, thick forest. How would you get something that... How could you do that in there? And I knew yeah. it had to be animals. And then we yeah. saw bark missing off of the, all the trees when we got in a little farther. And it was oh, like wow. trees missing from the ground up about uh, eight, 10 feet, you know, as high as we could reach a little bit. Some of them were a little bit hard, but there it was torn right off and made smooth. And it was like, who's scratching up there? Like the bears can barely reach that height. Why are they? Right. I had no idea, and and um, we did notice that the the trees were almost not really like a polished, but they were smooth, and it was like mm-hmm. that. That's different because usually when they the bark comes off a tree, it dries weird, and who knows in the forest, right? And the, all these, the grounds tore up, and the, and the trees are looking weird, and they're, it's black, it's dark, this area. So we're like, hmm, that's strange. And, we, and my son goes around, and um, we kept looking on the ground, and he finds a big hole by this tree. And, uh, uh, oh, cool. So he goes down in the hole, and um, I come up to the hole, and he jumped clear over top of me coming out of the hole and he starts running and go, what are you doing and, and and he comes back he goes there's a huge bear in there and oh. i says oh wow did you wake it up and he says yeah yeah i didn't i says well we got a couple of minutes then what color are its eyes and he goes green and i said and he says i bashed into it head on and he said, green eyes opened on either side of my head. Oh, wow. I said, oh, that's a big, that's a big one. So he came out and I says, well, I'll go in. And I went into the cave and I, I uh, reached out and I took a picture of it. Eh? And I took about three, four pictures of it. And she, he started growling at me like, buzz off, you know, like now you're annoying me. And uh, yeah. but I got three really amazing pictures of this. Did you this use flash? Board. Yeah, I did too. Oh, that must have annoyed the hell out of him. Wow. Oh, I did. oh yeah. yeah. He didn't like it at all. It was waking him up pretty quick. Oh. And then yeah. he says, well, we got to be calm about this because if he wakes up all the way and we're too close, <laughs> he's going to take he's gonna take one of us for lunch. Wow. And I, only, I, I had two boys with me that had never been in the bush before, and their mothers had let them go with us. <laughs> and something ran across my head there real quick, like, oh, no, I better shut that one off. We're not doing that. Okay, guys, we're going this way. Bunch up. And uh, yeah. and we kind of took off. Eh? And we went into the bush for a bit. And then we came back because uh, I wanted to see where 
if it had come out or if it was still in there or what we got going. It came back, the bear's not there. So then we look up. And just as we look up, we see this huge, big, dark form walking towards us. And he's about 60, 60, 60 feet? No, 60 yards. 60 yards, yeah, it was just past 50 yards. And we could see him clear. And he came right to the edge of where the all the and then I realized this is a, like we're totally open season and he's all camouflaged and we're standing in the open. So I saw some strategy immediately. But anyways, we looked and I said to my son, James, can you see that? He goes, mm-hmm. And then we saw it look straight at us and, across, and then it did a crossover with its legs to move over behind a tree from one tree to another. And then it stood behind it. And I was like, how did that huge thing hide behind that little tree? And yeah. It's only about a foot around. How did you do that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then he peeked out. And when he peeked out, we got a chill big time. It was like, that ain't no bear. That is not a moose. That is not an elk. That is not a cat. That looked like a man. And then it went behind that tree and hit again for a second. And we saw it come down on the ground. Randy, you're roll. breaking up really bad. Oh, God. Yeah, really? maybe get closer to it. Okay. How about if you get closer to it? I Sometimes it seems yeah. better. You can get close to the phone. Maybe that would there work. You go. That that's much better. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Better. There's no, still yeah. a little bit, but that's much better. Okay, yeah. not so bad then. All right. <laughs> I'm great. Where was I now? Great. You had to go when you looked at you. You said this wasn't a man. It's it's a big creature, and it's not yeah, a bear. And 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 then he, when he hit the ground, he did a roll, and then it looked like he was crawling like a commando would crawl like face down and just arms out pull yourself along and get the hell out of wherever right and then we so james and so there was i sent the boys back and james we had a 22 way so you guys Ooh. hang on i'll be right back i'm gonna go see where this is and i went forward and i ran up to where it was and then i called james come up and uh, we couldn't we looked on the ground and it's like that thing's that big. Where are the marks? We couldn't see yeah. marks on the ground. Couldn't find the damn thing anywhere. That's we weird. looked everywhere. We searched that ground. We went on our hands and knees. And we 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 looked at everything. And we stood we couldn't find it. We did we knew he had gone that way, but I said that was a lure. He's probably behind us, but we don't know. But that was not there. A lot of people go, oh, yeah, you saw a bear. No, bears look much different. And when they're yeah. in the bush, they don't walk around big and Mr. Tuffy. They're on all fours with their nose in the ground going, where's the next meal? They look up quite often into the trees to see who's there. And they mm -hmm. just lumber along. They're, and they're not you know, four and a half feet tall. They're busy looking for food. They're not right. Up, uh, growing into 10 foot or bigger things that look like humans. Those are completely different creatures. And um, I know that they exist in the flesh because I've seen it and I've yeah. encountered it in a, with my almost all of my senses except of actually being touched by them. But um, yeah, that was close enough for me at uh, that first encounter. Yeah. But I know that they wanted to communicate with me uh it was it four years ago and i'll tell you they just came that guy the one that i first saw came to me in my dream and then he stayed in my dreams every night for quite a while about three or four months so i started telling and asking a lot of people hey what's if you had a dream like that was that me and stuff and nobody seemed to really know so yeah this thing is just humming like a like it's got a hummingbird in it or something. All right. What happened there? Oh, you just froze up Oops. for a second. You're, you're okay. Oh, there we go. We we actually hear that. Uh, you just described, Randy. We we've heard that a bit, you know, uh, on the show. Hey, Nick. 
about it. You know, as far as uh, after people see these things, they see them for a certain amount of time in their dreams, whether they're trying to communicate with you or whether they're just showing up with their dreams. But I, I truly believe it's some sort of communication. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Because every time he talked to me, it was about something different. It wasn't like yep. the same picture every night. Every night, okay. I was like, okay, and this is classroom number four, and we're on lesson eight. You know, like yeah. last night was lesson seven. We're not stopping for anything. Did you do your homework? You know, like you almost, ah, you know, like, but it's in my dreams, right? So I'm like, what? Right. You know, and, and he's laughing all the time. He thinks I'm hilarious. And he seems to really like me. And uh, that's all I know so far. And, was this um, one as big as the other one? That, no, that was the one that talked to me. It was the first one. That's the no, one that's the first communicating one. Okay. with. The second one second? I, is not communicating to me that I'm, I'm aware of at the moment. But that doesn't mean that he isn't. And those two right. places were only about 20, 25 miles apart, I think. I don't think there are much more than that mm. uh, at those sites. I'd have to go mark it out. I should mark it out. I right. think about that because I'm just going on my memory. And I've got post-traumatic stress, so I better start marking it out to make sure I got my miles and that, or otherwise I'll forget where it is. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, they maybe say that's maybe get a can of sp- be ninety, right? No. <laughs> maybe get a can of spray paint and hit the tree a little bit, and you know, with an arrow, so you'll know, or an X or something, so you'll know where it happened. Yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. Well, I just to mark it on my own map for myself so that I have it, and then that way I know, because I know that they uh, they went in there and they did a lot of work with the oil field. Yeah, but right. I'll be, but I'll know where to go still. But I mean, if I get on that road the right way, I know I'll know it still. So, right. Randy, in the I, time you've been out there, uh, yes, have you ever seen uh, what we call a dog man? You know what what I'm talking about? Oh yes, yes, I've heard of these animals, and no, I have not. Oh <laughs> no, I'm but, glad they're not in your area. Then that'd be great. That's right. good. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a good thing, Randy. That's a good, that's a real yeah. good thing. The only thing I've seen like close to a dog is and uh, there's a pack of eight wolves out okay. there, and, and they they keep to themselves and enjoy enjoy their lives, and I don't bother them. I leave them I leave them treats all the time, but that's oh. it. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind doing that for them. Did um any Sasquatch ever try to follow you home? Well, see, that's what I wondered about, is would these things try and do that? But I, I don't know. Like, I, I had a lot of nightmares or um, dreams uh, probably for two weeks afterwards, mm-hmm. um, every night okay. about the situation and that. And there was a lot of concern in my mind about it, it followed me home. I, I was yeah. so disoriented that I didn't even, yeah. I just went straight home. I didn't, I didn't take any maneuvers to uh you know lose someone or anything i went straight home <laughs> well just some yeah. just some advice don't leave food for sasquatch oh yeah yes because you once you do it you got to do it every day and never yeah. stop because oh, if you do yeah. if you do stop they'll get angry and they will yeah. come and you know tell you yo uh where's my food and my food? they get kind of aggressive Towards all you right. Again. All right. So food would not be good, but no, um, no, other no. offerings of maybe just you know tokens of things like yeah <laughs> different colored things or or um, you know just little trinket trinkets stuff. are okay. Yeah, but food for Trinkets some reason. Right. Yeah. I had it's, a it's uh, I had an individual report to me that they were leaving Snicker bars for Sasquatch. Yep. yep. And uh, that caused them. Uh, uh, untold un- grief, told, untold problems like you would not believe. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you can imagine a, a three-year-old a child, a human, and you give them a lot of sugar, and yeah. they're bouncing off the walls. Sasquatch, yeah, they don't eat that stuff, and when they do, they get addicted to it. And uh, this person stopped after like three days. 
and they really got angry. They they tore up his whole backyard area and everything. Oh wow! wow. Well, I'm not interested in having that problem. <laughs> no. no, no, that's no, why I mean trinkets, that's... trinkets, marbles, glass, shiny things. That's um, good. They'll leave yeah. you things in you know in exchange. But to right. leave them food, don't don't do food. Don't do food. No. Yeah. No, I don't no want way. to disrespect that. I think the biggest thing is just making sure you don't disrespect. Yeah, that's, well, that's one thing, yeah. Because it's a first yeah. encounter. Like it's like it, I I I'm going I'm taking it very carefully and almost reverent because um yeah. my my point is is to connect. And uh, how can you get what did, what were you trying to tell me all those years ago? Which seems you're still alive, so yeah. But I've come back, you know, so tell us what would you like, or does he just want to continue talking to me in this manner? I don't know, right? So right, it's kind of uh, something, but also, um, I Something else that I found out is there's like um, energy that comes out of the ground. Ley lines. Ley lines. I get, are you familiar with those? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, well, I went somewhere where it was known to them and it wasn't known to me. And I stepped on one of those things. Oh. Um, I really, uh, I stepped on more than one and I was like, what's going on? And then they said, oh. If you're feeling that, that means you're sensitive to energy and that there, this is a ley line area and all this area is, um, has been marked out archaeological for yeah. much other stuff. And I was like, oh, so they said, you're actually a pretty handy guy. You're like a, one of those guys that win a water or whatever. It's just you can do it with minerals. Oh, the divining rods. Yeah. Yeah, or right. something, or some kind of energy. I sense that energy that a lot of people don't. So, yes. they, could, so they were interested in that. But maybe, who knows how that happened or how it came about that I could feel those things. Right, right, so, exactly. Well, guys, well, Nick, we're, we're at the end of our filming time. Okay. Yeah. And I, I wish it yep. would have been so bad with that noisy thing in the background. Yeah, that's uh, okay. We can have Kurt, we can have our uh, tech guy try to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, Randy, mm -hmm. don't hang up when we uh, stop filming. Just hang on. Oh, sure. Randy, we want to thank you for coming on. That was that was awesome. Yeah, that thank you, Randy. Unbelievable. You're we'll welcome. have it posted uh, sometime later tomorrow morning, and I'll make sure it's sent right over to you. And uh, want to thank all our viewers out there for uh, you know tuning in again. And uh, you guys are all great. Uh, you know, you need to get hold of Nick and I for anything having to do with the subject, Dogman, Sasquatch, anything. We cover everything on the show. Uh, you can reach either one of us by messenger or email or whatever. We're all, we're on our group pages, wherever. On uh, Facebook, always... Facebook Messenger, uh, International Dogman Project. Uh, we have many chapters, uh, many regions out there that you can look up. Yep. Just look up International Dogman Project. Uh, message us anytime. I fielded about 10 messages today on my Facebook Messenger. And uh, in fact, I have one guy, Bear Bocham. He's up in Canada. He asked me a few questions about Dogman today. So, I mean, folks, uh, anytime. And listen, thank you for guys. If you listened to the end of the program, it was well worth it. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, listening. I know we had some sound problems and difficulties. We're going to try to deal with that in the future. And yeah. uh, Randy, really, thanks for coming on. Yeah, Jay, thanks for Jay, welcome. Jay, take care, ma'am. I'm glad okay. that you have me. Thank you. All right. Have a good night, guy. Have a good night, everyone out there. Be good to each other. God bless. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye-bye now.